Hey guys, so this is my crazy video idea where I decided to only eat food from 7-Eleven in Australia for a week. Uh, I did the same thing when I was in Japan a little while ago and I got a lot of views on that video and um, thought it could be interesting to try and make a comparison between the Australian 7-Eleven and the Japanese 7-Eleven. As you can probably see from uh, what you're looking at on screen right now, it's definitely different. I mean, we've got some noodles there, but that's about it. So uh, there's a lot of junk food, nothing that's particularly fresh, like some bakery things, a bit of fruit, you've got milk and juice, a couple of salads, some microwave meals, but really it's, it's not the same as uh, the standard that you get in Japan. And because of that, what was supposed to be me eating food from 7-Eleven in Australia for a week ended up being more like me eating the food for about four days and then feeling so ill that I couldn't even stand up and um, I mean just keep watching and you will see the madness unfold. So with that, please enjoy. <laughs> So I've got breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. This is a natural pot set yogurt by Farmers Union. This was $3. I've also got this, sultry salted caramel chocolate coated protein bar. And to go with breakfast, I've also got this. This is called Cranked Premium Protein Shake. It's a natural low carb energy drink. So for lunch, this is a 7-Eleven chicken teriyaki salad with roasted sesame dressing. Share a Coke with Samuel, because if my best friend isn't here right now, I can at least imagine to be sharing a drink with him. And then for dinner, this is a 7-Eleven Luscious Layers Beef Lasagna with Bechamel Sauce. I also got this. This is a garden salad. This was $5. I think $5 is a fair bit for this. In Japan, a garden salad would probably be 150 yen, $1.50 or $2 or so. I'm kind of concerned for my bowels because this is a lot of protein I have going on with this breakfast. I have a protein shake and a protein bar and protein filled yogurt. So good thing I have two salads for the rest of the day because otherwise I don't see this ending well for my tummy. Yogurt's yogurt really, let's be honest. Oh, something I wanted to ask you guys. In my 7-Eleven food video, I did a day that was a vegetarian day and vegetarians eat dairy, but there are literally thousands of comments saying, cheese isn't vegetarian, eggs aren't vegetarian. I believe you guys are getting vegan and vegetarian confused. Vegetarians will eat honey, they will eat cheese, they will eat eggs. Uh, no. <laughs> now there is yogurt on the table and on my sleeve. If you want to have an argument in the comment section below, please do. I'm sure that there will be a lot of vegetarians ready to back up what I'm saying. So anyway, I guess this is a vegetarian breakfast, I suppose. <laughs> I'm really interested in this protein bar. Let's give it a try. Oh my God, it's actually really nice. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. It is delicious. Not for you. Last up, I have the protein shake. Now, I didn't actually realize at the time, but this is a caffeinated protein shake. This has green tea extract and guarana. Guarana. Guarana? Good, because I didn't actually pick up a coffee, and I normally like to have a coffee first thing in the morning, so I'm very excited to see what this tastes like. Chock honeycomb. Hints of honeycomb are coming through. Probably wouldn't buy it again, I don't think. You know, you have breakfast. There's literally food in your cage. Go eat it. Only ever wants my food. I can give him the most delicious food in the world in his food bowl, but if I'm eating something, it's not interesting. You wouldn't even like this, I swear. Got no nuts in it, got no seeds. It's far too unhealthy, Archie. Pretty pastel please fighting with her bird for food for a week. I'm full. I haven't finished my protein shake and I haven't finished my yogurt, but all that protein is really, really filling me up. 
<laughs> so I'm gonna put this on hold for now and come back to it a bit later and uh, anyway, breakfast, somewhat of a success. I think how this is gonna go, let's do my pick today, which I've got everything. Tomorrow, gluten-free. I have to pick gluten-free food. The next day, have to go vegan. Vegan for the day. Day four can be classic Australian food. And then day five can be only 7-Eleven branded food. So uh, I'll see you guys at lunch. Lunch time now. Uh, I, have, I have my chicken teriyaki salad. I'm a little bit nervous because I'm kind of concerned that it's going to be off. Well, not off, but you know, not, not as nice as it could be considering it was very heavily reduced and the cabbage looks brown. It smells really funky. There's one piece of chicken there. Uh, two, two pieces of chicken. Um, oh, three pieces of chicken. That, that's it, that's it. Three pieces of chicken. That's a very decent serving of sesame seeds, I must say. On with the dressing. Here goes, one piece of chicken. After this, there will only be two morsels left. Okay, that was actually quite tasty. I'm legitimately shocked. This is thoroughly delicious. I can't believe how nice this salad is. I'm gonna buy this again. It's so tasty. You know, I didn't think he was interested. I was like, oh yeah, Archie's not gonna be interested at all because it's salad and it's healthy and he has healthy food in his cage and he doesn't want it. But obviously, once again, because I'm eating it, he wants it. None of this is healthy for you. Mm. Outside of filming this 7-Eleven video, I would actually happily buy this salad and then cook up some chicken breast of my own and then add it on top of the salad because it's really tasty. And because this was only $3, even if I was paying the full price, like not discounted at $7.50, I would still buy it. This should keep me tied over until dinner because I, I'm still kind of feeling full from all that protein with breakfast. So I don't see myself going hungry today. I don't know if I could finish this. I'm actually exhausted from eating. And no, you may not finish it for me. Let me have my last morsel of chicken. That was so good. Hopefully I will work up an appetite between now and dinner and uh, I will check back in once I'm ready to tackle that lasagna. I'm back, I've had my nails done. It's 7 p.m. now, time for lasagna and salad. I've already given Archie his dinner and I'm sure he's full, but despite that, he is definitely going to try and steal my food. So anyway, I'm going to microwave this. It says here, microwave on high for four minutes, stand for one minute. Let's heat this up and get eating. <laughs> So let us try this salad, which I don't have high hopes for because the lettuce doesn't look particularly crispy. I put that dressing all over it without even tasting the dressing. So I hope that it's not gross. I hope it's not like honey mustard or something. I think that's a French dressing. Can you not? I didn't really want to make this video because to me buying food at 7-Eleven in Australia is kind of pointless. Because 7-Eleven isn't everywhere like it is in Japan. There's a 7-Eleven on every street corner in Japan, but in Australia, it's literally, it's a petrol station rather than a convenience store. The lasagna is kind of bland. So I do have this, I know I'm, I'm technically cheating, aren't I? But I put chili sauce on literally everything. This is a Master Foods hot chili sauce. They may even possibly sell this in 7-Eleven. I will check 7-Eleven tomorrow and see if there's any chili sauce because I'm, I need to put chili sauce on most things that I eat. The only thing that would make this better for me would be if I had garlic bread and if I had red wine. Let me finish this off, then let's have a look at what I'm going to be eating tomorrow. I've eaten $27 worth of convenience store food today and I feel totally fine. Archie's settling in for the night. Look at this, he's, he's getting all sleepy. Oh, little baby. 
He's just happy that I'm in Australia filming this video and not in another country. I'm thinking tomorrow can be the gluten-free day. So wish me luck for tomorrow. So we're going to D&D today and this is a bad day for me to pick gluten-free food because all my friends are going to be eating fun snacks and I'm going to be eating gluten-free, which I don't mind because you can get some nice gluten-free stuff, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to find anything good. So join me while I look. Can confirm no chili sauce. I am devastated, but there is chili tuna, which will be good. I eventually caved and bought uh, Krispy Kreme because Australia. Well, because we're going to D&D. Oh yeah, because we're going to D&D. Oh, look, you got to tell them that or else I can't think you're eating it all your on your own. <laughs> I am eating it all by myself. Okay, so I have uh, all of my food here for the day. Now, as you guys might remember, yesterday it came to $27. Now, that was just food for me. Obviously, today I tried to buy a bit of extra food because we're doing a games day today. So I do have more than what I need for myself. Uh, and because of that, the total did come to $76.43. $76. On two bags of food from 7 Eleven in Australia. Slurpee Mega, $3. Butter Chicken, $7. So, all the other products actually say gluten free. This one, when I read all the ingredients, it doesn't look like it has gluten. And it says may contain eggs, fish, gluten, peanuts, soy, blah, blah, blah. Probably because of the facility that they make it in, they can't guarantee that it's not gluten free. But the ingredients themselves don't contain gluten. So, that's going to be dinner. That was $7. Super salad. $5. The salad itself is gluten-free, but the dressing may contain wheat. If you don't use the dressing, well, you know that lettuce leaves are gluten-free. $5 for that. Biltong beef, $5.75. These both say gluten-free. Ice break 500 ml. That's uh, $4.15 for a big iced coffee. Good. 45 gram original. Good. Good. What is 45 grams that is good? Good! So because Pringles aren't gluten free, I got these. These are The Good Chip Company original. $3.50 for that little tiny thing. Salt and vinegar, 175 gram chips. $6.30 I paid for a packet of chips. I got these Kettle Taste Sensation barbecue spices and sticky maple. I don't even know what it is. Are they chips? It, it actually doesn't say. It just says Kettle Taste Sensation Decadent Flavor Collection barbecue spices and sticky maple. Are they chips? We are yet to find out. That was $4. This pack of honey soy gluten-free kettle chips, $4 again. To Daniel's dismay, I did buy sliced cheese because cheese is gluten-free. I didn't think that a salad and some snacks was gonna be enough, so this was $6.50. This, I can't believe I paid $4 for this. Look, this is this is a little tiny tub of hummus with some crackers in the top. These are gluten-free crackers, $4. Lemon yogurt, look, the cheapest thing I got. $2.50. This is my breakfast. I'm actually really looking forward to this. Thick and creamy lemon cream yogurt. That sounds absolutely delicious. Chili tuna. I got two of these. $4 each. If you go to Woolworths, you can get these for 50 cents. $4 each I paid for two tins of chili tuna. At least they're gluten free. Uh, and then last but not least, $3.50 for each snacking salami. <laughs> I love this stuff. So uh, that's all the food for the day. This is for everyone to share. That's the junk food that's gluten free. That's uh, everything I picked up. Dan also got a muffin, a hot chocolate and some crispy creams that he'll be sharing with people. I think for now I'm going to head in. We're going to get a start on our games. I'm going to eat my breakfast and finish my Slurpee. I think breakfast is going to be the, the yogurt and the Slurpee and the coffee and one of the salami sticks because that's as good as it's going to get. Breakfast of champions right there. Please try. <laughs> I'm so tempted to just pour, <laughs> pour it over your head. <laughs> you didn't even try it. <laughs> More. Uh, 
I like it. D you're joking. Another. You're joking. Are you just saying that? Well, no. Like, obviously, it it's like too Vegemite. sweet. Vegemite. What? It's horrible. Are you sick? Are you sick? You must be sick. <laughs> the fact that this tastes normal to me, but like Vegemite to you, tells me that you are sick as <laughs> Okay, you can have that, that's fine. <laughs> I've had my breakfast, it's snack time now. We're snacking on Le Biltong. I can't believe you, Sam liked the iced coffee. Daniel and I thought it tasted like a I say, Watson, not bad. Not bad at all. Why do you have a pipe? <laughs> Excellent question, Mortimer. It helps me think. Don't be alarmed. It's only me. I'm fresh out of the shower, fresh faced, and uh, I have washed away the tail of my eyebrows. Okay, so we are all done with our games day and uh, I ended up eating so much junk food, so many chips, so much biltong that I didn't eat my salad and tuna for lunch, which means that I'm not having the buttered chicken for dinner. I'm choosing to have the salad and the tuna for dinner. So, oh wow, I wasn't expecting that. Look at that dressing. It's like, oh, beetroot and yogurt. Hmm, I'm not the biggest fan of beetroot and I don't think beetroot dressing would go very well with tuna. I might actually just get a bowl. I'm going to set aside some of this salad and try it with that beetroot because I'm curious. That's a very, very bright looking beetroot and it's a beetroot yogurt. So I think that it could taste quite nice. Not a fan. Seed mix, on, tuna, on. Now I have two tins of tuna because I didn't think that one was going to be enough. This is a pretty standard lunch for me, I would say. Like I will often, on a busy work day, just pick up a, a boxed salad and then just throw a tin of tuna in there with it. The salad was $5 and the tuna was $3.50 or $4 a tin. I could absolutely put this together a hell of a lot cheaper just from a supermarket. Uh, and this doesn't taste great either. At least it's healthy. It must be a little bit fancy. Have a little bit of cheese with some salami. You're probably wondering where Archie is right now. He is currently asleep with Daniel. If you're lucky, I will take the camera in and show you. You know, it's funny, despite today being a gluten-free day, I don't feel particularly deprived of anything. I've had snacks. I've had a pretty decent breakfast. I feel full. I've got meat and dairy and nutrients from the salad. So I think the gluten-free thing was pretty easy. What I'm worried about is the vegan day tomorrow. So let me finish this off. I don't even have a drink. You'd think spending 70 something dollars, I would at least have a drink with dinner, but didn't end up with one. Okay, it's uh, day three now and I feel like absolute rubbish. I ate so much junk food yesterday, which surprises me. I really didn't think that on the gluten-free day I would be having bad food, but it was all those chips and everything. I'm going to keep an eye out for healthy nutritional stuff. Definitely gonna pick up some fruit, probably some fruit and nut bars and things like that. I, I'm desperate for a coffee, so I'm probably just gonna have to get a black coffee to make it vegan. I don't have the highest hopes finding proper meals. I really don't think that I will find actual meals in here. Wish me luck. Okay, I'm so sad. I really thought I'd be able to find some almond milk or something, but I have not been able to. And all of those iced coffees, even the black ones, contain milk. Okay, so I'm thinking baked beans, they're vegan. And also, look, we've got bolognese with chunky tomato, garlic, and herbs. I think this is vegan. Yep, looks like it is. And they even have spaghetti. Here, look, ingredients. Durham wheat semolina. May contain traces of egg, but it says it doesn't contain it as an ingredient. So there we go. A pasta it is. Okay, well, we are on to day three vegan food. Time to unbox this bag of everything that I bought at 7-Eleven. This was expensive, guys. I'm not happy. <laughs> this cost $50. 
for one day's worth of food. Shocking, I know, unbelievable. Garden salad, $5. Now this is the same garden salad I had the other day. It's vegan minus the sachet of cheese on the inside. Barocca, $4.80. I'm ashamed. If you were paying $5 a pop, a tube of Barocca would be like 50 bucks. So uh, anyway, look, I bought this because I couldn't find, I couldn't find a single vegan caffeinated beverage aside from energy drinks. And I'm trying to be somewhat health conscious in this video. I'm, I'm not wanting to just eat junk food the whole time. So I wanted to avoid the I also have Legos sauce, $4.50. Funny to think that this huge jar of tomato sauce for pasta cost the same, actually cost less than what this Barocca cost. And this Barocca is literally a bottle of water with a single Barocca tablet. That's cool. That's good. Maybe I'll just drink this for energy instead. Is this an Italian energy drink? Okay, so, excuse me, no. This is the main reason that this costs so much. I got vegan Ben and Jerry's ice cream. This was $14 for this little pint of ice cream. This is Ben and Jerry's made with almond milk, cinnamon buns, non-dairy frozen dessert. We also have spaghetti. It actually says spaghetti on my receipt. $4.50 for this spaghetti. I'm pretty sure at Woolworths this would have been $2 or $3. dollars so this is a salted caramel protein ball by Health Lab. It says Game Changer on it. It's made with dates, coconuts, cashews, plant protein, and sea salt. It says it's gluten-free and vegan. $3.50 for a tiny little bite-sized morsel isn't great. H2 Melon Water. So this was $5.50 for 500 mils of watermelon water. That is a little bit much again, but I think that this is going to be delicious. Anything watermelon flavored, and especially when it's not artificial, this seems as though it is actually real watermelon juice. So I'm actually quite excited about that one. Uh, Bliss Ball, 40 grams, $3.50. That'd be this one here, Choc Hazelnut, vegan, all natural, raw, high in fiber. This one was $4.50. This is the clean bar. Ingredients, plant, proteins, dates, bananas, almonds, pepitas, chia seeds, cinnamon, vitamin E, and that's it. Non-GMO, gluten-free, free from dairy, vegan friendly, and it's banana bread flavor. Obviously I couldn't have a slice of banana bread for breakfast, so I think that I will start my day with this. And the last thing that I got was a banana for $1. That's the day's worth of vegan food. All of that came to $53. That's, I feel ill. This is $53. Welcome to Australia. You guys wonder why I like Japan so much. Leave me alone. Okay, so breakfast. No. So with that, let's jump into breakfast, which will probably just be this little protein bar and the Barocca and maybe the banana. Let's start with that and then I'll see how I go for the rest of the day. And Archie, can you please, please, this is not family friendly. Daniel, can you come help me? Thank you. Here you go. You can have some. You may. Go on. Yes, good boy. See? Oh, wow. How's that? See, if I put a piece of banana in Archie's bowl, he won't touch it. He'll look at it, he'll throw it out of the bowl, but if I'm eating it and I pretend like, oh wow, look how nice this is. This is so delicious. And Archie's like, can I have some? Eat the banana. It's cause I'm not eating it. I put it down. It's no longer interesting. Very keen to try this clean bar. Banana bread, okay. It smells not like banana bread. It's very, very dense. There's a hint of banana flavor in there. Just a hint. I would probably buy this again. It doesn't taste bad. Oh look, bananas are delicious. Wow, I love bananas. I'm not eating anything else, only banana. Yes, delicious banana.
as far as breakfast goes, I, I do feel a little bit underwhelmed. There was nothing that's the vegan equivalent of yogurt for sale in 7-Eleven. So, uh, I think I'm just going to have to have another one of these little protein things at some point. I do have two more that I can enjoy throughout the day. I'm feeling okay now. I feel like ever so slightly content from the half banana I've had and the, the protein bar. So, I'll check back at lunchtime when I make my, uh, beans. <laughs> You can have some. I right, just check the ingredients. It's literally just nuts and dates. Go on. Okay, three o'clock now, I'm going to have my next bliss ball. I'm definitely feeling hungry and not particularly satisfied. This one is huge. It smells like Nutella. It smells just like Nutella. I hope it tastes like Nutella too. Hmm, it tastes ever so slightly like Nutella. Really the taste is overwhelmingly coconut though because there's a bunch of coconut on the outside. Uh, because it's three o'clock, I really should have eaten my lunch by now. I'm supposed to have the baked beans for lunch. <sighs> I don't really feel like eating baked beans. I haven't eaten baked beans in a very long time. That's something I would normally take camping with me. I guess if I prepare a bowl of baked beans and then I'll get my salad out, I uh, can't put the cheese on the salad, but I think the dressing is vegan. So I guess I'll prepare that. Good morning, it is day four now, and this is definitely the unhealthiest day that I have had in a very, very, very long time. I tried to pick out stuff that is stereotypically Australian, so this is all I'm going to be eating today. I love how when I did the Japanese food day in my 7-Eleven Japan video, I had such a, a lovely range of different types of food that were quite nutritional, Nothing here is going to be nutritionally beneficial in any way at all. And it also cost me $50 for everything that you see here in front of you. Yep. $50. Bundaberg Sarsbarella. Bundaberg is a Australian family owned business. They make a whole bunch of different types of drinks. They have creaming soda, lemonade, ginger beer, but I got Sarsbarella. I don't know if they have this overseas. I think this is basically the equivalent of root beer. I'm not entirely sure. Root beer doesn't really exist over here. You can't just go into a restaurant and order a root beer with your meal. No such thing. I think Sarsbarella might be the closest thing. I really like the taste of this stuff, but some people think that it tastes like medicine. And that was $3.70 for that drink there. Traditional sausage roll, $3.50. Sausage rolls are an integral part of growing up in Australia, but I've been made aware that they don't really exist in other countries so much. Maybe in England they have something similar to this, but I, I think Americans freak out when they see the sort of stuff like meat pies and sausage rolls. I love a good sausage roll, especially if the flaky pastry is a little bit crispy. I don't have high hopes for this. This has been sitting in a heated, no, it's not time to play Skyrim. This has been sitting in a heated box most of the day. I don't know if it'll be very crispy. This was $3.50. This is a classic go-to on the road kind of meal. We have a bacon and cheese roll. Now this one was $5. This is a little bit bigger than what the sausage roll was. I've got a beef pie, $3.50. Beef pies, nothing unusual to me. Apparently in America, they, they don't put meat inside pastry. Apparently they put sweet things inside pastry. That's not such a big thing here to have sweet pies. Meat pies are what we have here. Basically the sausage rolls and the meat pies are the only hot things you can get in our 7-Eleven. I've got a chicken and leek pie. This one was $5. It looks like it's got some herbs there on the top. Mate, if you don't stop, I'll put you in a pie. I've got a jam and cream lamington. Now, I was under the impression that lamingtons were Australian, but there is some debate over the origin of lamingtons, but uh, this one is jam and cream. It's like a cake 
kind of spongy cake with coconut rough on the outside. This was $2.50. I've got pizza shapes. Lots of kids growing up in Australia had these in their lunchbox at school. Shapes are by Arnott's. I don't know if the um, Arnott's products are available overseas. A lot of Australians will recognize this as a trusted favorite. They ended up making a new recipe recently and there was outcry nationwide because they changed the recipe and the shapes weren't as good as they used to be. So I hope that this is the original recipe because they did end up reverting their decision and they went back to the original recipe. This little pack was $2.35. Now one of the most expensive things that I picked up was the Vegemite. Vegemite is a classic Australian product. Proudly made in Australia since 1923. This tastes like petrol, maybe? I don't know what you could possibly equate the taste of Vegemite to. It's uh, the Australian equivalent of natto. <laughs> so maybe for the thumbnail, I'll have to scoop some of this out and pull a terrified face like I did with the natto. Now I'm gonna put this on the bread. The loaf of bread was $3.40 for a plain white loaf of bread. And I'm also gonna make a classic Australian snack where you put the Vegemite on the bread and then you put cheese over the top. I still have heaps of cheese left over from the gluten-free day. I picked up Oak. Now Oak is an Australian chocolate milk brand. We love our Oak here. They have a saying and it's like, kill hungry, thirsty, dead. So if you're hungry and you're thirsty at the same time, have an Oak and it'll be quite filling. This is a big bottle. This one was $5.65 for a big chocolate milk. I got Aero. I don't know if Aero is available overseas. I'm pretty sure this is Australian. I seem to remember a friend of mine that moved overseas to America. She asked me to send her some chocolate bars and she wanted me to send her an Aero. I don't know, do you guys have these in your country? Aero is like a, a mint kind of bubbly chocolate. This was $3.30. I got a wagon wheel bar, which was $2.70. Now wagon wheels, I'm pretty sure this is a classic Australian product. I've never actually really had them. Growing up, some of my friends loved them. I think that it's a biscuit and cream and jam, I'm pretty sure. Mate, are you, can you please not? Stay away from me. No, I'm not interested. No, no, no. Wiggle, wiggle. Dairy Milk Freddo. This is a, a classic. Caramello Koalas and Freddo Frogs. Classic Australian chocolates. It was four for $2.60. I got a Mega Slurpee, which was $3. This is a sugar-free one. This was a mixed berry. I know Slurpees aren't necessarily Australian as such, but us Aussies, we do love a good Slurpee on a hot summer day when you're in the car, pull in for fuel, grab a Slurpee. It's an essential. And that's everything. So um, this is... A very unhealthy day. I'm ready to feast, I guess you could say. Look at this plate in front of me. Does that really look appealing to you? What, what part of that looks appealing? If it doesn't look appealing to me, I don't see how it's appealing to you. I promise you don't want that. I promise. Okay, sausage roll time. This was quite soggy when I pulled it out of the bag. Archie's never seen a sausage roll. What do you think? What do you think it is? Does this look like food to you? Any Australian that eats a sausage roll without tomato sauce, there's something wrong with you. It's very, very salty, slightly peppery, not a huge amount of flavor, doesn't even taste like meat. This could be vegan. They could probably make these things vegan, just mash up a whole bunch of vegetables and put some barbecue kind of seasoning in it, and you wouldn't know because there's no part of this that resembles meat. And without the tomato sauce, it's just so dry. It's really hard to eat without the tomato sauce. Need a drink. Ooh, 100% tastes like medicine in the best way possible. I'm interested in this bacon and cheese because when I tore this in half, I was really expecting it would be like a big cheesy mess on the inside with little pieces of bacon floating in the cheese. But no, it's um, like a big solid log of meat from the looks of it. Smells a little bit cheesy. The cheese must just be completely mixed in there with the meat because you can't, there's no gooiness. I was really hoping it would be like oozing cheese. Again, with the tomato sauce. This one is really, really big. I literally don't even think that that actually has bacon in it. I feel like, you know, when you, when you buy shapes and there's bacon flavored shapes and they just use a bacon seasoning, I feel like they've just taken ground beef and seasoned it with bacon seasoning. I would never buy that again. It's even more dense than the beef one. Doesn't give you enough flavor to be worth eating. It's kind of like just eating a big doughy pile of meaty bread that is only like fake meat. 
Meat pie time. I do love a good meat pie. The meat inside, I thought that it would be a little bit more saucy. It's very, very meaty. Smells promising. That smells quite tasty. I can sort of smell maybe like a little bit of onion in there. Gravy. Archie's never seen a meat pie before. Mmm! It's so good. I really feel sorry for anyone living in a country that does not offer meat in their pies. It's like ever so slightly sweet. I think that they mix a little bit of sugar in there with the meat. The pastry is actually crispy. I didn't think it would be. It's really nice and crispy. So good. I don't normally eat carbs and stuff like that. I ate a pretty healthy diet. <laughs> Maybe that's part of the reason this tastes so good. Maybe if I just ate carbs regularly, probably because I, I don't really eat junk food. That's why this tastes so good. Mmm. You don't know what you're missing out on, buddy. And chicken pie time. Now the chicken pie is really, really gooey on the inside. I can see bits of whole grain mustard in there. Some greens, probably onion, I would say. Ugh. Do not smell your chicken pie. It smell, well, it smells like feet. Oh, I, t I just remembered it's, it's a leek pie, chicken and leek pie, right. We have a, a word we use in Australia called reek. If something reeks, it smells really bad. The leek reek, mate. I don't know if I should have put tomato sauce on this or not. Oh man. Oh, that's so bad. The chicken is like so dry. I could hardly swallow that piece of chicken that I just put in my mouth. Ugh. I hate wasting food, so I'm not gonna toss it, but uh, I would absolutely never, ever, ever buy this again. <laughs> it's so bad. I think I'd rather eat earwax. You know the pie is bad when the tomato sauce can't even save it. No, I'm done. That was the equivalent of probably one sausage roll and one pie I would say I just had for breakfast. Can I help you? I don't feel good. I feel terrible. I probably won't need to eat again for a couple of hours, but I'm gonna have my little snacks throughout the day. The Australian tradition of melting cheese over Vegemite. Okay, it's lunchtime. Uh, I kind of screwed up a little bit. I think that, well, I don't think, I, I can see that I burnt my toast. All the Australians are screaming at me right now because despite how confident I was about recreating this, I don't think I've ever actually made it myself. It's the sort of thing that mothers make this for their kids. Uh, and then by the time you're no longer at school and then you kind of forget about this type of food, I had forgotten exactly how you're meant to do it. I think maybe I should have used two slices of cheese because when the cheese melted, it went very, very thin. But uh, anyway, Vegemite, toast, cheese. Mm. Vegemite is generally unpleasant. It does that same thing to your tongue that alcohol does. You know, like if you take a shot of alcohol and it's strong alcohol and then you're your mouth kind of goes and then your eyes involuntarily start twitching and you're like it does that Vegemite does that to you because it's just it's very aggressive and the cheese kind of balances it out a little bit makes it more palatable so I have my chocolate milk my oak always shake your chocolate milk so it goes nice and frothy and it mixes the concentrated chocolate in what on the side of this it says what's hungry thirsty Stop asking questions. It's a state of weak indecision where you're neither hungry nor thirsty, but a bit of both. 
but Oak 750 mil kills two birds with one steel meteorite of flavoured milk. It's full strength, full flavour, full on. Oak punches Hungry Thirsty in the face with a tank. Sounds very aggressively American. At some petrol stations you can buy frozen oak and it's like a slushy that's made of chocolate milk and it's so good and I wish it was at 7-Eleven. Ah, yes. Oak is the best chocolate milk brand as far as I'm concerned. Don't at me. And to offset just how terribly bitter that Vegemite was, I'm going to try the wagon wheel. So that's what the little bar looks like. Oh my god. Oh! Oh, that's good. That's really good. This actually really, really reminds me of Black Forest chocolate. If you've ever had Cadbury Black Forest chocolate, which is the best Cadbury chocolate in the world, this tastes very, very similar to that. So it's a solid piece of chocolate and then it's got little bits in it. Wagon wheels are so classically Australian, I guess they think every Australian knows exactly what it is because they don't have anything on the blurb. Normally it says something like um, luscious pieces of chocolate coated with blah. It doesn't say what it is. I have no idea what that white thing is. Absolutely no idea. Could be nougat, but I don't think it is. It could be like dehydrated cream. I don't know. It's very, very tasty. There's a bit of crunch in there, like biscuit crunch, and there's really, really nice flavour of jam. Mmm. Oh my god. I'm gonna buy this again, this is so nice. Mm-mm. Not for you. I've already been snacking on my shapes. I love the pizza flavour, there's a barbecue flavour that's really, really nice too. The thing is, they really nailed the whole pizza thing. It does taste really similar to like a pepperoni or a margarita pizza. And they're perfectly crunchy. Why are you screaming? Polly want a cracker? I feel like a garbage can. I honestly feel like such rubbish, like I need to have a nap. This would not happen in Japan. In Japan you can very, very easily get all the nutrition that you need from 7-Eleven and it's still fun and interesting and delicious. Anyway, this is going basically exactly how I thought it was gonna go for the week. I feel like rubbish, I'm eating like rubbish, costing a huge amount of money. Just another day in Australia, really.